Hey married dudes. Want to have more sex? With your wife, I mean. Stop doing housework. Okay, let me explain this one. A study was done that concluded men who do housework get laid more. Yeah, it's like the bullshit of men with smaller balls make better fathers, and all that nonsense. It was a bullshit study. Well secondary research showed that it wasn't that men doing more housework got laid more, it was that the housework being done that got him laid the most was traditional men's work, like taking out the garbage and, yeah, I can't really think of any other, I guess house repair, but is that even housework, so a bullshit study revealed some pro-feminist bullshit, this was then reinterpreted by traditionalists to produce some traditionalist bullshit conclusion, which was then being called bullshit by feminist drag Jezebel.com which is now being called bullshit by Janet Bloomfield, which I am now calling bullshit on. Everyone got that? Yeah, it's all more of the feminists versus traditionalist warfare to best maximize women's happiness, using the lie that either side is good for men, you can almost hear the feminists crying out men join our side, you get laid if you do, followed by the traditionalists saying no no, men, join our side, you get laid if you do, so, let's go over Janet's blog. File this one under no shit Sherlock but it turns out that married couples who adhere to a gendered division of household labor have more sex than those who don't. Of course! Yep, it turns out that playing out traditional masculine and feminine roles has an impact on sexual desire, and therefore on sexual frequency. Guys who take out the garbage, mow the lawn, pay the bills and take care of the vehicles are getting laid 20 more times a year than the kitchen bitches slaving over a hot stove. Holy shit, wow, no traditionalism there, and sarcasm. Let me get this straight, you are proudly boasting that a traditional division of labor is sexy, more desired in couples, and will ultimately just produce more sex, you even defined paying bills as being a part of sexy masculine traditional male role, and then proceed to mock men who break from tradition, calling them kitchen bitches, yet again, oh no folks, no traditionalism here, Dina's May is totally right, all of us MIGTO are just making shit up because Diana Davison is giving us dick pics, anyhow, Janet, do go on. And obviously, the inverse is true, too. Ladies who cook, vacuum, fold the laundry and make the kids' dentist appointments are getting loved 20 more times, too. Why should this be? I have a theory, I think it has to do with respect. And I think the point you're making here is women don't respect non-traditional masculine men? Feminism has spent a long time trying to convince both men and women that gender is socially constructed. Well technically it is, sex is biologically determined, masculine and feminine, gender is observed, because it differs from time to time, culture to culture, some of what gets called masculine and feminine must be accepted as cultural influence, things like it is girly to eat pudding in Japan, it is feminine to have a purse in western culture. Skirts are for girls, thus are feminine. Pants are for boys, thus masculine. Except for when they are not. Now to be fair. I think when the feminists say gender is a social construct, they often mean that all male and female behavior is a social construct, completely denying inborn differences in tendency. But to be fair the traditionalist tends to believe that all male and female behavior is hardwired biology, and those not marching in traditional lockstep are abominations, both are wrong, and idiots. You know what's weird, John Locke is the father of modern liberalism with his notion that we are tabula rosa, blank slate, and thus all behavior is socially taught. Of course he is also the father of modern conservatism for his natural law theory. Wait, does that mean outside of the economics, our entire left-right battle is based on one idiot who was full of self-contradiction? No wonder western culture is fucked. Anyhow, back to you Janet. Feminism has spent a long time trying to convince both men and women that gender is socially constructed. That in and of itself is not a bad thing, necessarily. Stupid, but not bad. Where feminism went really wrong was to define femininity as positive, all the while ignoring the not-so-pleasant qualities associated with the feminine, while simultaneously defining masculinity as negative, all the while ignoring the wonderful things about masculinity. You mean like paying your bills and taking out your trash? Feminism is straight up a theory of female supremacy. Ladies rock. Men suck. Of course by ladies, we mean white ladies, so don't get excited, all you ladies of color. You are here to do all the shit work the white ladies don't want to do anymore. So get your mops and get at it. Tossing in some white guilt, because, oh I get it, the cultural Marxist portion of feminism beats the white guilt drums and uses people of color as a shield slash pawn, and now you want to beat the white guilt drums harder and use people of color as a shield slash pawn, 
Meanwhile there are some people of color who wish you'd all knock it off. Once you accept the premise that the feminine is a priori superior to the masculine, the plan of attack becomes quite obvious, men must become feminine or be forever defined as inferior and unworthy. It's a tongue-in-cheek aphorism that feminists hate men, but of course, that's not true. They love men. As long as men act like women. No not really, and half the time they don't like you when you have a physical sex change. Also, attacking men for acting masculine, or acting in typical male fashion, isn't exclusively a feminist domain. Women in general, whether they identify as feminist or not, nag 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 at men for all the typical male things men do. I just wanted to toss that out there, to remind people the problem is women being women. Oh there are the exceptions to that rule. Women praising maleness when it includes such things as paying the bills. Of course, Jezebel responded to the research, conducted at the University of Washington using a sample size of 4,500, that's a good sample, with reason and rationality. They took a careful look at the data and then tried to come up with some hypothesis that might explain why couples following traditional gender roles might have increased sexual desire for one another. Yeah, right. Nope. What they did was mock and ridicule the data, and then set up some kind of bullshit sex a time dollars, which is pretty rich, considering the data indicates that sex is exactly what they won't be getting. Well, not as often as the couples in the study who rejected the idea that women's work is man's work and the two are interchangeable. No, that's not what their article was conveying, or I am just really confused right now. Their article set up a parody, things like killing a spider is one million sex points, because this is a super macho house chore and men who take out the trash get 250,000 sex points because that's how masculine it is, and you get to cash in your points for doing such traditional masculine things around the house, they were ridiculing the notion that men doing traditional masculine house chores were getting more sex, a lot of their ridicule was based on the notion of what the fuck is male housework and female housework, they laughed at how mowing the lawn was very masculine because it had a motor and spinning blades, and spinning blades is like some Indiana Jones shit, actually, I'll confess. It was a hilarious response to the study, and it really gets you to think, why are certain house chores referred to as masculine and others feminine? Well, house repair is masculine because, it involves, muscle and competence, and mowing the lawn is a thing done outside the home, and inside the home is feminine, where women belong, and outside is masculine where men belong, and taking out the trash involves an act of briefly leaving the house, therefore is more feminine than mowing the yard, but more masculine than doing the dishes, after all, a man leaving the house, just briefly even, he faces danger, he faces the elements, and dangers such as wild raccoons, yeah, I can totally see how after a man takes out the smelly trash, and fights the elements and does battle with wild raccoons, a woman's snatch gets all wet and she jumps into the arms of her big strong brave hero. Look at how they titled the piece, Cleanliness is next to manliness, which chores will get a man laid. There you have feminism in a nutshell. Sex is something women give to men as a reward for doing whatever SHE defines as necessary. Good dog. Actually they are mocking the traditional housewife who pays her rent with her vagina, like you, whore. Sex as an act of bonding, an expression of the deepest love and care, a mutually satisfying and pleasurable experience does not even occur to these women. Or a housewife who feels she has an entitlement to be bought and paid for because she squeezes out a baby, cooks a meal, and gives her man daily blowjobs. Nope. Sex is a tool, a weapon, something you can use to coerce men into doing whatever shit these women want. This applies to all women, not just those wearing the feminist label. And oh my. We have a word for coerced sex. We do. I know it. It's on the tip of my tongue. Give me a second. Oh yeah. Rape. To all the tradkins and right-wing extremists in the audience, this is your cue to scream bloody murder that Janet is claiming that wives who reward their husbands with housework are committing rape. This is your cue to scream it at the top of your lungs, followed by oh my god she is just as bad as the feminists. No, you guys only do that when I get metaphorical, even though my hyperbolic metaphors are even more obvious than this, okay, fine. Now isn't that fascinating? A long time ago, a gorgeous, svelte, luscious lady, the pure embodiment of femininity, said that all heterosexual sex is rape. Andrea work in picture, by which she means men are raping women. Here's a new one for you. All sex with a feminist is rape. Women raping men. Dudes, if you are getting laid tonight in exchange for cooking dinner or sweeping the floor or folding the laundry, and you would not otherwise have done those things, you are getting raped. And if you are getting laid for paying this woman's bills. Hey, lots of men love to cook, 
and good for them. The best cooks in the world are men hash sorry feminists. But when you have been ordered into the kitchen by a sulky bitch who figures it's your turn and if you don't do it, I won't have sex with you, then you sir, are being coerced, and that is rape. Down with rape culture. No means no. No, I won't cook dinner. No, I will not pay you to stay home and watch TV all day while the kids are at school. No, I won't vacuum. No, I will not mow the lawn, I'm sore because I work. No, I won't pick up all those fucking Barbie shoes. No, housewife, I will not buy you another pair of shoes. No, I won't fluff the throw cushions. No, I will not pay off your student loan debt. No, no, no. No, 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 I will not pay your half of the rent. Give the rape a pass, dudes. Traditional gender division of labor is how you put more sex into your relationship. Sex based on love and affection and respect and admiration and desire. And paying your bills. Take a page from Marilyn's book, Sex is a Part of Nature. I go along with nature Marilyn Monroe. Me too. If you really want to have more sex in your relationship, do not marry the bitch. Married couples have less sex. There's a million and one books out there on how to have more sex in your marriage. Why? Because marriage kills a woman's libido, kills a man's libido too. And in the same way Janet has a theory that it's about respect, I too have a theory it's about respect. Once you have locked yourself into a marriage contract with a woman, promising to pay for the bitch, she no longer respects you for being a weak ass provider beta male. You are wild, young, untamed, feral, mysterious, dangerous, adventurous. Now you are a weak ass pussy beggar, paying your end of the marriage contract with money, and her paying her end of the contract with sex. She's secured and set for life, so she gets fat and stops trying. And again, who can respect a man who has to pay a woman for affection? That's sad shit, dude. And the husband who works his ass off, never really gets to see the kids, and watches his wife get fatter. He starts to think about how he is paying her for her job as housewife, and takes note that sitting on your ass all day, and then popping a chicken in the oven a few hours before he comes home, really isn't worth the amount of money he is paying her. It starts to piss him off actually, but he's stuck with her, stuck paying for sex with a woman whose body is going to hell, and so he figures if his money is paying for something other than sex, it's housework, that coffee table sure is dusty considering how much he is paying her, and she needs to get up before him and have breakfast ready, what the fuck is he paying this bitch for, so he starts getting sharp with her, after all, if she worked, that's 1.2 million extra dollars the family could have, so this house better be spotless, he thinks to himself, and she gets tired of him being sharp, after all, she holds all the power of divorce, so he better shut his fucking mouth and respect her, and then he gets angry that his wife isn't respecting his non-existent authority, and he blames the whole thing on feminism, and then praises the blog of people like Janet Bloomfield who say a woman should fake more submission to their powerless husband, and be more housewifey, and so the husband and wife sit around not liking and not respecting each other, and then they start fighting, and he tries to man up and stand his ground, and then she pulls the divorce trigger, and then he loses everything because women are entitled to the children and fathers are child supporters, not child caregivers, and then he cries like a baby and goes running to a place like AVFM crying about how feminism done made women all uppity and non-obedient, and once in MRA space, he discovers this thing called men going their own way, and then his eyes are opened, and he is reborn, heals, and spiritually grows into a stronger more individualist and autonomous person, and then commits to MGTO activism handing red pills to young men in hopes of saving them, okay, so maybe I got carried away and my theory isn't all that sound, but the very real truth is, if you want to have lots of sex in your relationship, don't be a Mr. Sensitive, and don't try to be some traditionalist, just don't get married. Now with the next video, because I am responding to so many parts of it, what I am going to do is play the whole thing, so you can get the gist, the feel, understand everything in full context, then I will dissect it. Daddy, it's all your fault if your daughter grows up to be a housewife. It's not because she's, you know, educated and intelligent and capable of making her own choices. So here's some research out of the University of British Columbia in Canada that says girls who grow up with kitchen bitches fathers who do housework are more likely to choose a career over their family's well-being. That's a nice one-two punch, isn't it? Slagging women who make their children a priority and simultaneously blaming men. Quite frankly. This whole men are to blame for everything shtick is getting boring. Let's assume for one second, just one goddamn fucking second, that women are rational, thinking, 
intelligent creatures who consider their options and make choices based on what is best for themselves, their children, their husbands, their communities and their culture. Can we do that, feminism? Can we act like women are adults, capable of making decisions outside some framework of oppression and victimization? It boggles my mind that any woman, anywhere, would ever call herself a feminist when it so clearly requires that she surrender her basic humanity and lie down to be steamrolled by some imaginary patriarchy. Feminism, the radical notion that women are children incapable of making any rational, thoughtful intelligent decisions on their own, feminism, the radical notion that women are victims who can always blame someone else for their own choices, feminism, the radical notion that women are oppressed and stupid and blind and senseless, here's an idea, women who grow up with fathers who model masculinity have an easier time sorting through the lies that feminist culture preaches. When girls grow up seeing men act like men and women act like women, they reject the idea that we are completely and utterly interchangeable and that the needs of children don't matter. Women who grow up seeing dependents model don't have a problem accepting that depending on a man when one has small children is not a deep threat to their own existence because they have the lived proof that men are not evil oppressors. Patriarchy, the idea that men deliberately designed a system to hurt the women they love the most in the world, their mothers, daughters, sisters, aunts, nieces, wives, yeah, that sounds plausible. There was no patriarchy. Aristocracy and patriarchy are not the same thing. The rich want to hang on to their wealth and privilege and are willing to throw millions of poor people under the hay wagon to do so, yes. Absolutely. The rich continue to sacrifice the poor for their own comfort but rich women are just as willing to do that as rich men. Hello, Marissa Meyer, building a nursery in her office so she can spend at least a few minutes a day with her baby while forcing all of Yahoo's remote workers to drop their kids off at daycare and get their asses into the office. It's no coincidence that Meyer rejects the label feminist, because she isn't one. She's a modern-day aristocrat, with the wealth and power and privilege and opportunity to take care of her own family while sacrificing the families of her minions. Big fucking surprise there. Who is oppressing all the mommies at Yahoo? Oh yeah, that would be another woman. So much for the patriarchy. Let's take a look for a second, shall we, at who all these stay-at-home mothers are. The poor saps who grew up with a daddy who took out the garbage and earned the family's income rather than let his wife shackle him to the dishwasher. The first thing we need to unpack is the assertion that most mothers of young children are working full-time. They are not. From the 2011 U.S. Census, we can see that the labor force participation rate for women with children under the age of 6 is 68%, but that participation rate does not distinguish between full and part-time work. Only two-thirds of that cohort work full-time, which means that 45% of mothers with kids under 6 are working full-time. Less than half. And are they working the hours they would prefer? Nope. 62% of working mothers would prefer part-time. And look at this. 74% of working mothers would rather not work outside the home at all. Well now. Lisa Belkin created a stir with her opt-out revolution piece in the New York Times, explaining how all the high-powered career ladies from elite schools had babies and dupes. They fell in love with them, and to hell with the job. Because those ladies are all ignorant fucks, incapable of making intelligent choices that maximize the welfare of their whole families, right? You see, as long as smart ladies run the feminist gauntlet, get super prestigious qualifications and use those qualifications to earn cold hard cash, they are smart, capable women worthy of the utmost respect and adulation. But the second they decide that their husbands and families are deserving of their intelligence, oh well then they're just stupid mules who have fallen under the spell of the patriarchy and they are betraying womankind with their refusal to work for other people. True story, Mr. JB's boss has a daughter who is fully and completely trained as an ENT, ear, nose, throat, surgeon. She has spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, both her own and the state's money, acquiring this training and now that she is done, what does she want to do? Have babies and stay home. And that is exactly what she plans to do. What a clever use of our collective resources. Training a woman to be a surgeon so she can stay at home with her children. Lady Doc wishes she had not gone into medicine, now that she is older and wiser and understands what it is she really wants out of life. She may never work as a surgeon. She bought the lie, hook line and sinker, that she would care about money and prestige and power and her labor market value. She does not care. She cares about her children, her husband, her family. Now that her parents are growing older, she cares deeply about them, too. The idea that women who are at work are intelligent, confident, capable human beings worthy of respect and admiration, 
while women who are at home are brainwashed idiots incapable of determining the course of their own lives pisses me off something fierce, for obvious reasons. But what really irritates the shit out of me is the idea that it's somehow men's fault I'm a stay-at-home wife and mother. If I'm going to be stupid, at least let me be stupid. If I'm going to brand it an idiot for loving my husband and children more than a cubicle, then at least let me be the idiot. It's true that men are really good at accomplishing things. But you know, I'd like the privilege of owning my own shit, the good and the bad. If you're gonna do research to show why I'm such a moron to be at home, at least pay me the respect of treating my decision as if it were my decision. Feminists can ride the blame train to the ends of hell, as far as I'm concerned. I'm getting off right here, at the corner of adulthood and accountability. It's a nice part of town. We're all grown-ups here. We make our own choices, and most of them are pretty smart. And the ones that aren't so smart? Ah well. I can live with those, too. My decisions are still my decisions. I don't need to invent a theory of universal oppression just so I have someone to blame. I already have someone to blame. Myself. Good thing I rarely make bad decisions. Saves me a lot of trouble, really. A man can fail many times, but he isn't a failure until he begins to blame somebody else. John Burroughs. Now we dissect. So here's some research out of the University of British Columbia in Canada that says girls who grow up with kitchen bitches fathers who do housework are more likely to choose a career over their family's well-being. Again with the man shaming, any man that doesn't support his woman's stay-at-home entitlement is a kitchen bitch. But to be fair you are also woman shaming with statements equating to every woman that makes me look bad by having a job is throwing her family under the bus. Oh and as far as a career over their family's well-being I think the additional 1.2 million to 2.1 million dollar lifetime income would help the family out more than dusting the furniture and doing the laundry, but whatever. That's a nice one-two punch, isn't it? Slagging women who make their children a priority and simultaneously blaming men. Quite frankly, this whole men are to blame for everything shtick is getting boring. So is blame everything on feminism, or in your case, blame everything on women having jobs. Let's assume for one second, just one goddamn fucking second, that women are rational, thinking, intelligent creatures who consider their options and make choices based on what is best for themselves, their children, their husbands, their communities and their culture. Women make choices on what suits their selfish personal needs, then mask the selfishness of it with the illusion of altruism, typically just hiding everything behind for the greater good of our children. But I suppose you're asking us to play devil's advocate, so do go on. Can we do that? feminism? Can we act like women are adults, capable of making decisions outside some framework of oppression and victimization? The way you tell it, women are oppressed by feminism. Yeah traditionalists blame women's oppression on feminism, feminism blames it on patriarchy, traditionalism, and in reality neither oppresses women, and both oppress men. It boggles my mind that any woman, anywhere, would ever call herself a feminist when it so clearly requires that she surrender her basic humanity and lie down to be steamrolled by some imaginary patriarchy. Feminism, the radical notion that women are children incapable of making any rational, thoughtful intelligent decisions on their own, feminism, the radical notion that women are victims who can always blame someone else for their own choices, feminism, the radical notion that women are oppressed and stupid and blind and senseless. We had a lot of discussions the whole time that we were dating about what we wanted out of life, what our goals were, um, what we wanted to achieve, what we wanted to accomplish, how we wanted our day-to-day -day life to look. And at no point did either one of us, my husband included, ever stop to think how I would be able to contribute to our family financially. It's just not a conversation that is encouraged. We do not encourage young women or young men to think about their ambitions and think about their choices in terms of how that is going to impact the family they would like to have if they want to have a family. And th that's the reality. Most people would like to have children. Most people would like to see those children raised at home. 70% of women in a Forbes survey said that being a stay-at-home parent was their new American dream. An almost unattainable dream because they didn't make the choices they needed to make to give themselves any choices. Where does this come from? Where does this reluctance to discuss how our ambitions and aspirations affect what we want out of life in terms of family come from. Well, I think you can trace it right back to Simone de Beauvoir. 
Okay, it's Marxist feminism. Follow the money. The more you cripple a family, the more you make a family an absolutely, utterly ineffective way of supporting individuals inside that family, the more you need a big state. The more you need state employees. The more you need, oh, guess what? Jobs for women who are essentially unqualified to do anything other than file papers alphabetically and answer the fucking phone. Okay, so in this blog entry, you are trying to make a case that women are responsible adults that make informed intelligent decisions, when that decision is staying at home while the husband does all the work, and then here you are in this same blog entry mocking feminism for deferring blame onto an oppressive patriarchy, you are trying to tell these are pity feminists that women's alleged bad choices, staying at home or not going far in a career, is based on women being too stupid to go far in a career, and their choice to stay home is a well thought out and informed one. But in your last video denying the allegations of you being a traditionalist, you first take blame for being a stay at home mother, claim it is the result of you being stupid, then you deflect blame of being stupid, blaming your stupidity, bad decisions, on not discussing these decisions, and blame that on Simone de Voyer, feminism, and then blame this on a Marxist feminist conspiracy to get women to work, holy shit Janet, how do you keep all this nonsense straight, I swear, I am so lost as to what you even claim to believe. Is your philosophy some sort of code where you contradict yourself so many times that there is a pattern in these contradictions, a method to this madness, like, you contradicted yourself in that video, you are contradicting yourself in this blog, and I am thinking maybe some of the contradictions in the blog match the contradictions in the video and I have to add up the contradictions to see if there is a cohesive pattern, and for a split second, that almost made sense in my brain, until I realized that even if there was a consistency, it would still lead to just one contradiction. And in that moment Janet, I felt my sanity was slipping away, you just remind me of a suspect changing their story over and over to try to maintain their innocence, or maybe you seriously have some sort of split personality going on, I keep trying to give you the benefit of the doubt that I am just misunderstanding things. Feminism, the radical notion that women are oppressed and stupid and blind and senseless, here's an idea. Women who grow up with fathers who model masculinity have an easier time sorting through the lies that feminist culture preaches. When girls grow up seeing men act like men and women act like women, they reject the idea that we are completely and utterly interchangeable and that the needs of children don't matter. Women who grow up seeing dependence model don't have a problem accepting that depending on a man when one has small children is not a deep threat to their own existence because they have the lived proof that men are not evil oppressors. And here you are defining masculinity as supporting a family, the statement fathers who model masculinity, rather than being stay at home kitchen bitches or equal partnership kitchen bitches. And of course, as you just said, it's a feminist lie that the sexes are interchangeable. So what you've said here is, masculinity is working to support a family and femininity is staying home raising children, and these roles are not interchangeable, but no traditionalism here, right? Patriarchy, the idea that men deliberately designed a system to hurt the women they love the most in the world, their mothers, daughters, sisters, aunts, nieces, wives, yeah, that sounds plausible. There was no patriarchy. Well there was no patriarchy in the feminist definition that you gave. But we were patriarchal in the sense that husbands, fathers, were breadwinners, thus held authority over his dependent wife and children. You yourself have advocated this in your Star Trek family model of husband as captain and wife as first officer, and children as crew. What we had was a society, a social system, based on the father of the nuclear family having rule over that family. The argument becomes feminists demonizing this system to the point of rebranding the word, and traditionalists glorifying it. The argument here is patriarchy oppressed women versus no it gave us a free ride. By the way folks, there's your entire left wing right wing argument in regards to gender, and the moment a man stops and thinks, but at any time did us men benefit, will us men benefit, that's when the shaming language of kitchen bitch strikes at his fragile sense of masculinity and he just runs out the door and goes to work and pays them bills like a good heterosexual manly man, I am going to play that last clip over again, and I want you to look for it, Janet is mentioning that the feminists were wrong, patriarchy doesn't oppress women, it provided for women, that is patriarchy is good for women. Women who grow up seeing dependence model don't have a problem accepting that depending on a man when one has small children is not a deep threat to their own existence because they have the lived proof that men are not evil oppressors. Patriarchy, the idea that men deliberately designed a system to hurt the women they love the most in the world, their mothers, daughters, 
sisters, aunts, nieces, wives, yeah, that sounds plausible. There was no patriarchy. Maybe you can say I am reaching with this one, but it sounds to me like when she says there was no patriarchy she means that the old rule by breadwinner father was good for women, not harmful to them. Anyhow, you can say I am reaching with that one. There was no patriarchy. Aristocracy and patriarchy are not the same thing. The rich want to hang on to their wealth and privilege and are willing to throw millions of poor people under the hay wagon to do so, yes. Absolutely. The rich continue to sacrifice the poor for their own comfort, but rich women are just as willing to do that as rich men. Right now Janet, all of your current supporters are hardcore capitalists, right-wing extremists, so bitching about wealth disparity and useless capitalist purchases, and environmentalism, isn't going to bode well for you. But by all means keep griping about the wealth disparity between the proletariat and the bourgeois. Hello, Marissa Meyer, building a nursery in her office so she can spend at least a few minutes a day with her baby while forcing all of Yahoo's remote workers to drop their kids off at daycare and get their asses into the office. It's no coincidence that Meyer rejects the label feminist, because she isn't one. She's a modern-day aristocrat with the wealth and power and privilege and opportunity to take care of her own family while sacrificing the families of her minions. Big fucking surprise there. Who is oppressing all the mommies at Yahoo? Not being able to stay home with your children because you have an employer who forbids it, is oppression? A person lacks freedom because they have a boss. I've heard this argument before. It was in a book written by Karl Marx. Or maybe I am missing the dynamic here that you are calling oppression. Oh yeah, that would be another woman. So much for the patriarchy. Let's take a look for a second, shall we, at who all these stay-at-home mothers are. The poor saps who grew up with a daddy who took out the garbage and earned the family's income rather than let his wife shackle him to the dishwasher. Fucking kitchen bitches, I swear. The first thing we need to unpack is the assertion that most mothers of young children are working full-time. They are not. From the 2011 U.S. Census, we can see that the labor force participation rate for women with children under the age of 6 is 68%, but that participation rate does not distinguish between full and part-time work. Only two-thirds of that cohort work full-time, which means that 45% of mothers with kids under six are working full-time. Less than half. And are they working the hours they would prefer? Nope. 62% of working mothers would prefer part-time. And look at this, 74% of working mothers would rather not work outside the home at all. Well now. Lisa Belkin created a stir with her opt-out revolution piece in the New York Times explaining how all the high-powered career ladies from elite schools had babies and dupes. They fell in love with them, and to hell with the job. Because those ladies are all ignorant fucks, incapable of making intelligent choices that maximize the welfare of their whole families, right? You see, as long as smart ladies run the feminist gauntlet, get super prestigious qualifications and use those qualifications to earn cold hard cash, they are smart, capable women worthy of the utmost respect and adulation. But the second they decide that their husbands and families are deserving of their intelligence, oh well then they're just stupid mules who have fallen under the spell of the patriarchy and they are betraying womankind with their refusal to work for other people. Husbands and families deserving of their intelligence? What does that even mean? God damn it I can just see one of you little parasites sitting at home with your feet all propped up, watching TV, kids are at school, appliances done did all the housework for you, your husband comes home early, stressed, exhausted. His job is in jeopardy, and he asks you what have you done all day, and you reply contributed my intelligence. True story, Mr. JB's boss has a daughter who is fully and completely trained as an ENT, ear, nose, throat, surgeon. She has spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, both her own and the state's money, acquiring this training and now that she is done, what does she want to do? Have babies and stay home. And that is exactly what she plans to do. Oh God. I want everyone to imagine that, imagine you decided not to go MIGTO, imagine that you decided she's the rare elusive Nawalt, and this one is going to be a winner because she just graduated medical school, she's going to be a fucking surgeon, hello BMW, hello Mercedes, hello big house up on the hill, and then you marry her, you get her knocked up, and she turns and says you know what, I quit, fuck work, I wanna be a stay at home mommy, so I need you to get a job, pay off my student loan, and pay me to sit at home with the children. And after you laugh, you realize this wasn't a joke, fuck her medical degree, you are paying for everything, and you're paying off her debt, because she's made the decision she's going to be a stay-at-home mother, she's got stay-at-home entitlement, now get your ass in gear and get a job kitchen bitch. 
What a clever use of our collective resources. Draining a woman to be a surgeon so she can stay at home with her children. Lady Doc wishes she had not gone into medicine, now that she is older and wiser and understands what it is she really wants out of life. She may never work as a surgeon. She bought the lie, hook, line and sinker, that she would care about money and prestige and power and her labor market value. She does not care. She cares about her children, her husband, her family. Now that her parents are growing older, she cares deeply about them, too. ENTs make an average of $302,500 per year, that's $12,100,000 over a lifetime, I can just imagine how much love she has for her husband, making this schmuck pay off her student loan debt while she sits on her lazy entitled twat, and I am sure her son will just love moving out when he is 18, taking on a student loan debt of. By the time he is 18, it'll be 50k student loan, and that boy will have to work half his life away paying off that debt when his fucking mother and her 12 million, could have paid for him to go to a nice college, debt free, as he drove himself to and from places in his BMW, just smiling and smiling with his perfect teeth that braces afforded him, and her parents, could have a professional caregiver watching over them, but she deprived her parents, her husband, and her offspring, of $302,500 per year, because she wants to be a stay at home mommy, I swear to god, that selfish bitch needs to burn for what she just did. This is a fucking crime against her family, you know what, I'm going to say it, no woman should be authorized to stay at home to raise her children, society should be totally different, women should not have that choice, precisely because if there is such a choice, too many women will make that one, amen sister, this goddamn bitch done fucked her family out of $302,500 a year because she got baby fever, and one more reason, gentlemen, to never assume you got that in a Walt, this woman was going to be a promising doctor making $302,500 a year, and she done said to her man, nope, never mind, you do all the work, I wanna be a stay at home mother, talk about getting fucked over and burned big time, so don't fall for it gentlemen, women will fuck you over, out of their selfishness, in the blink of an eye, forget about the fact this woman is part of a family, she done got feelings, a change of heart, her wants and desires, she done made a decision, everyone else will just have to live with it, this woman stands up and denounces, I am going to fuck my family out of $12,100,000 because I wanna be a mommy. The entire right wing gives her a standing ovation, because a woman's place is in the home, barefoot and pregnant, and I bet her husband didn't stand up to this either. How would that have worked, um, honey, you know when we planned our life together, and were looking at our options, I was calculating an extra $302,500 per year in our life's end, and the wife would have cut him off with but babies need their mommy and I got desires and feelings, my vagina and maternal instincts are screaming me first, besides, you don't want to have to do housework, honey, if I had a job, you'd have to do things, girly things, like dishes, and vacuuming, and that's emasculating, it could make your balls fall off, and then you'll be a kitchen bitch, should I just buy you a cute little pink apron, is there some reason you want to be a kitchen bitch, oh my god, are you gay, is that what this is about, does your mother know you're gay, and the guy gets up and shouts I ain't no faggot, I don't want to be some kitchen bitch, look at me doing push ups, I'm manly, I'll support you and the children, I'll work two jobs, three jobs, four jobs, because I'm a rough and tough manly man, ok, point is, screwing your family out of $12,100,000 last moment because you have a change of heart, you get post maternal attachment disorder, is a crappy thing to do, and you know what, that fictional disease I just made up, that needs to be a thing, we need to push psychology into accepting post maternal attachment disorder, yeah, it means after giving birth, you do stupid, insane, unreasonable, and destructive things, like desiring stay at home motherhood so bad, that you sacrifice a promising career, a $302,500 a year career, just to bond with your offspring 24-7. The idea that women who are at work are intelligent, confident, capable human beings worthy of respect and admiration, while women who are at home are brainwashed idiots incapable of determining the course of their own lives pisses me off something fierce, for obvious reasons. And here you are Janet, on your blog, doing the exact opposite. You are claiming that women who stay home are smart, intelligent, compassionate, well-informed women, while women who work are throwing their children under the bus, being selfish, and are brainwashed by feminism. In other words, one group of women yammering about the traditional patriarchal model being bad for women and the other group stating it is good for women, competing with men versus exploiting men, what suits our vagina best, one says, 
patriarchy brainwashes women into staying home, the other says, feminism brainwashes women into leaving the home, two groups of female supremacists arguing over which model best suits women, and whichever choice women go with, men are stuck with. But what really irritates the shit out of me is the idea that it's somehow men's fault I'm a stay-at-home wife and mother. If I'm going to be stupid, at least let me be stupid. If I'm going to brand it an idiot for loving my husband and children more than a cubicle, then at least let me be the idiot. It's true that men are really good at accomplishing things. But you know, I'd like the privilege of owning my own shit, the good and the bad. If you're gonna do research to show why I'm such a moron to be at home. You're smart for staying home, it's your husband that is an idiot for supporting you, and your audience for thinking cheating your family out of 1.2 million to 2.1 is an act of love, and you're giving up a career, making a sacrifice out of love, who are idiots, and I want everyone to keep in mind the way this woman, and the way women in general, make selfish decisions but have that need to rephrase and turn everything around to make their selfishness look altruistic. At least pay me the respect of treating my decision as if it were my decision. Feminists can ride the blame train to the ends of hell, as far as I'm concerned. Didn't you say in your video, explaining you're not a traditionalist, that you being a stay-at-home mother, is based on you making stupid decisions, uninformed decisions, and you didn't inform yourself, and discuss things like this with your husband because, Simone de Voyer, and Marxist feminist conspiracy? I'm getting off right here, at the corner of adulthood and accountability. It's a nice part of town. We're all grown-ups here. We make our own choices, and most of them are pretty smart. And the ones that aren't so smart? Ah well. I can live with those, too. My decisions are still my decisions. I don't need to invent a theory of universal oppression just so I have someone to blame. Hey, it's Marxist feminism. Follow the money. The more you cripple a family, the more you make a family an absolutely utterly ineffective way of supporting individuals, inside that family, the more you need a big state. The more you need state employees. The more you need, oh, guess what? Jobs for women who are essentially unqualified to do anything. I already have someone to blame. Myself. Good thing I rarely make bad decisions. Saves me a lot of trouble, really. A man can fail many times but he isn't a failure until he begins to blame somebody else. John Burroughs You know what gets me Janet, you criticize working mothers, Christ Almighty, do you ever criticize working mothers, and you're not so friendly to those stay-at-home kitchen bitch husbands either, but here's the thing, only one out of four women identify as feminist, so the majority of women working, wouldn't even be feminists, furthermore, you even cite statistics that show 74% of working mothers would rather be at home with their children. Has it dawned on you that you are guilting and shaming to no end, women who are working mothers because being a stay-at-home parasite is just not an option for them, oh sure, they can make better decisions like finding a richer man to shack up with, because hey, women aren't seeking wealthy guys enough as it is, but you do understand, there just aren't that many sugar daddies out there, so maybe your position is just that women shouldn't have children if they can't find a man wealthy enough to leech off of, but that isn't true either because you've indicated that it is a woman's purpose to breed, you say things like this. Go back to that list. Pop star, actress, showgirl. Think I'm going to rail against that and demand that women start using their intelligence in more socially productive ways? No, I'm not. Women of enormous intelligence can do one thing that benefits everybody. Pass it on. Have children. Preferably male children. Hey Beyonce, I have some news for you. Girls don't run the, don't run the world. Boys do. Know why? Because they're smarter. Sorry. For whatever reason, they use their intelligence to develop simple tests to develop pancreatic cancer. Lauren, the smartest thing you could ever do is track down Jack. Find that guy. Marry him. You never know. He might like a showgirl with an IQ higher than Einstein. Women don't build, invent, or produce anything of real economic, social, or political value, but we shove humans out our vaginas, and that is the most important contribution of all. So pay me, motherfuckers. To hell with the career ladies, you aren't going to cure cancer or do anything as productive as the boys, so just fucking breed. 
your issue is unmistakably that women just shouldn't be working, work is a thing that should be reserved for men, because apparently in Janet's world no man should be authorized to stay at home to raise his children, society should be totally different, men should not have that choice, precisely because if there is such a choice, too many men will make that one, so we have to put forth great effort to shame women out of working, and shame those faggoty kitchen bitch men into having a career, anyhow Janet, as I was saying, if only one out of four women are feminists, oddly that coincides with one out of four getting raped, correlations are a bitch, and 74% of women would rather stay home, then doesn't this go to show that women working, do so because stay at home parasitism just isn't a choice, there just ain't enough sugar daddies for every woman, and as I just demonstrated, it's not like your gripe is with working mothers, it's with working women, in your mind, every woman that works jeopardizes your own parasitism, or at the very least, it allows career women, who contribute something to society, and possibly a paycheck to their family, the opportunity to look down their noses at you, and you're far too self-righteous and narcissistic to allow that to go unchallenged, at any rate, you're just attacking any woman with a job, even this woman, the CEO of Yahoo or whatever, she builds a daycare right in her office to bring her baby to work, and that's still not good enough for you, you are still trashing that move because god damn it women need to suck their thumb, play stupid, and get a free ride, just like you, I suspect your rationality for this is that if women just left the workplace and went home and got all barefoot, in the kitchen, pregnant yada yada yada, male wages would go up because half the workers equals twice the demand for their labor, well, I heard this many times from right wing extremists, and it made sense, I even made the mistake of repeating this nonsense years ago, but I've learned, this is not how it works, pretending just for a moment that women quit their jobs, and this didn't finish off our economy for good, and let's just pretend this somehow did raise men's wages so that men who made $12 an hour, are now making $24 an hour, you don't think that is going to be twice as much incentive for companies to pack it up and go overseas, they're taking so much shit overseas because even after import and export tariffs and the cost of shipping, working those slave wage brown children overseas and selling to rich white people in America is more profitable in many cases than paying $12 an hour, but if those men making $12 an hour somehow needed $24 an hour to do the job, fuck it, they're closing up all factories and sending them overseas, so the truth of the matter is, women started leaving the home and working, not because it was empowering, but because it was necessary, not because Simone de Voy has power to reorganize a nation, but because economic forces have made her statement come true, a humongous part of the problem is Americans are buying products Americans were not paid to make, of course economics, and our economic circumstances, are far more complex than that, point is, market forces forced women to get jobs, at best, feminism moved the heavens and the earth to force equal payment, first by backing the 1964 Civil Rights Act forcing equal opportunity, and then by implementing Marxist style quotas to force an equal outcome, but they didn't actually force women out of the house and into the workforce, the economy did, so here you are attacking every woman that works, telling them they are throwing their family under the bus, shaming men who do housework, basically shaming men and women who break with their outdated traditional role, and blaming everything on feminism as the great scapegoat, and then bitching that feminism is evil because it doesn't support stay at home mothers, which is false because many feminists do support this choice, and claiming you will not be a feminist because they don't feel that your motherhood entitles you to money, this, by the way, is also false, because they, and the entire left wing they are a part of, supports and pushes welfare, your belief that a woman ought to get paid to be a mother, and especially paid to do a decent job of raising children, is what famous author and committed socialist activist H.G. Wells said about mothers, a mother's work is work, and they should get paid, by society, and paid more for doing a good job. But your entire thing here is, you want a free ride, and you feel that your free ride should be looked on as noble and justified, and you perceive feminism to be the cause of any negative attitudes toward your stay-at-home parasitism, and even the cause of why many women are not following in your footsteps and acting on their stay-at-home entitlement and because feminism is fucking huge, and has been around for over a century, there is a significant portion of feminists then and now that do view staying at home as feeding the patriarchy, you've chosen to fixate on that one sect, and feminism has thus become your enemy, the only reason you became an MRA is because you bashed feminism non-stop with an extra helping of snark, and your motive to do so is because you felt they threatened your stay at home entitlement, well you better start bashing Migto because we don't support your stay at home entitlement either, no man should be having a child unless he can be guaranteed sole legal custody of that child, 
if some way somehow he is a father, we must do whatever it takes to push for his rights with his children, push father's rights, to enrich his experience as a father, and defend the sanctity of fatherhood, helpfully in the future Migto will be able to say that fatherhood is a natural part of manhood, as it stands now, it is a part of manhood that leads to female empowerment, I discourage men from becoming fathers, unless they can do it in a way that ensures unchallenged custody of the child, and to those who are already fathers, I want to look out for your rights as a father. Currently it is suicide for a man in western culture to become a father, but it is still a beautiful option for women, and Janet seems obsessed with women choosing to be mothers, stay at home mothers, so let's talk about why women are so obsessed with motherhood, if a woman has a baby, she is guaranteed resources from the family, tribe, or state, in olden days, a woman with a child was given resources by her husband, and or by the extended family, the tribe, or the town, right now, if a woman has a baby, she is guaranteed her husband or boyfriend's resources, if he should die or simply not have resources, the extended family will provide, if she can't turn to family, the state will provide, after all, a child's right to life is a positive right, it cannot be alive by its own means, it must be kept alive by a nurturing guardian, if a woman cannot feed the child, there are only three options, one, it dies, but, because it has a positive right to life, two, it is confiscated from the mother and placed into a foster home, either tax funded or some church based charity funded orphanage, however, charity is a rarity, and oftentimes it requires taxes to fund, thus it can cost a lot more to keep a child in a tax funded foster home, and to keep the mother in tax funded jail for neglecting her obligation to protect the child, it's typically cheaper just to pay her welfare, and so the third option is welfare, no matter how you slice it, socialist feminism versus conservative traditionalism, a woman with a baby has an immediate entitlement to provision, whether consciously realized or not, women will value their role as mother, based on the provisions it brings, getting pregnant is an instant entitlement to provision, thus a philosophy of ladies, just have babies, is a philosophy of capitalizing on a woman's natural entitlement to provision, such a person would perceive working women as a threat to this system of entitlement, I want everyone to stop and think about if parenthood was synonymous with fatherhood, and thus having a child was an immediate entitlement to provision for the father, I wonder how many women would glorify the stay at home parent role when women are not profiting off of it, I wonder if people like Janet would write articles explaining that if men got off their entitled asses it would cut women's wages in half, up the price of gas, cause pollution, and oh how valuable a stay at home father's contribution to the family is, point being, having a baby is a selfish act for a woman, the glorification of it is nothing more than girl power, again, you default parenthood to meaning fatherhood, and I dare you to show me even one traditionalist female, show me blog articles written by women about how stay at home fathers working would bankrupt the family, and daycare scars children, in such a world, does anyone here think Janet would tell women with high IQs to do something important, and just pass it on, have children? And now we move on to this article. Dating single mothers? Just say no. A note for all the single dudes. First up, let's clarify our terms. A widow is not a single mother. Her husband died. Lumping her in with single mothers is an insult to his memory, to her and to her children. So don't even think of doing it. Especially war widows. If you ever find yourself referring to a woman whose husband died on a battlefield as a single mother, you should immediately pour Tabasco sauce into your eyes, because you deserve to weep all the tears I'm certain she has. Divorced mothers are also not single mothers, although a huge flashing proceed with caution sign is definitely in order. We'll get to these charming ladies later. A single mother is a woman who had a child outside of any established relationship, or a relationship so fragile the thickest retard in the world ought to have been able to see bringing a child on board was a fucking terrible idea. Single mothers are bona fide idiots and here is why you should never even consider dating one. First, this is a woman who clearly doesn't give a shit about her child's well-being and future prospects. Children of single mothers do poorly on every imaginable scale, they have more emotional problems, experience more stress, are more likely to grow up poor, they have lower educational achievements and experience way more behavioral problems than children who grow up with married parents. Depression, suicide, drug abuse, jail and psychiatric medications are all more common in populations of children raised by single mothers. Okay, let's get this out of the way, widows are single parent mothers no matter how much you want to bash single parent mothers, I understand, you want to sock it to these bitches that aren't in a marriage, I get that and you call them single mothers, okay, fine, but there's just one little problem, widows with children, are technically single mothers, they're single, 
right? I mean they aren't remarried, they're widowed and not remarried, and they're mothers, right? So they are single mothers, oh, and as far as the sanctity of single mothers who have been widowed when their husband died on the battlefield, can I also point out that if you wanted to maximize the chances of your offspring having a father, not getting knocked up by a guy fighting overseas in a war, would go a long way. Also Janet, you mentioned that divorced mothers should be treated with suspicion because it shows a strong indicator that she is flawed, or her mate selecting skills are bad for choosing a man who is a con artist with a bigger gambling problem than Charlie Sheen, or something like that. Again, women whose mate selection included man in the middle of an overseas war are also kinda asking to be widowed, at least more than choosing man who works at the dry cleaners. But clearly this is about you pushing your condemnation of women who aren't married and parasitically leeching off of a husband, so fuck rationality and consistency, you have an emotionally charged snarky rant to make, next, all this crap about children of single mothers are all messed up, what you linked to was an analysis of a study, the actual study was the national longitudinal study of adolescent to adult health study, what does this study tell us, I can easily interpret the data to show that the less time children spent with their father, the worse their performance. So what we can take away is, women suck at being parents, and a father is needed, so maybe men should be the ones staying home and getting paid to be fathers, since you women do such a shit job, go get a job and support your stay at home husband, since studies show that lack of a present father hurts children. 60% of married men carry the primary financial burden for their families. Most people wish that number was even higher and most people agree that working moms are bad for kids and bad for marriage. In other news, the sun rises in the east. I'm not going to read this entire article and respond to it piece by piece, because the title says it all, it's the same old same old that we've been getting from Janet, mothers who work are pieces of shit yada yada yada. But I will respond to this one part, even though I have covered the topic before in this video, I really want to hammer it home, the myth that wives getting jobs hurts male salaries. People over 30 seem capable of understanding that having women work outside the home is bad for children and bad for marriage, but they don't seem to grasp a very simple economic fact, women flooding the labor market has been a key reason men's wages have evaporated. The number of jobs may have increased over the past few decades, mostly housewife or paper filing jobs, but the amount of money available to pay for those workers has not. Instead of having one very productive, usually male, worker earn a family living, we now have two workers fighting over the same wages. People under the age of 30 seem to get that, having two people work doesn't make it easier to live a comfortable life. It makes it harder. More people scrambling for the same resources will obviously make workplace competition cutthroat, and no one is better off in the long run. What we are seeing is a tragedy of the commons playing out. We have a finite, more or less, set of resources in the form of jobs and money. We need those jobs and money to support families and children. Rather than maximize our potential as a family unit, we have set up a situation in which any given individual has to fumble after limited resources the best way they can, leaving everyone worse off. The premise for your argument is wrong, money and jobs are not finite, perhaps in any given area, and on any given day, but not over any length of time, while you can count all the printed US money and count all US minted coins, that's still not a finite amount of money based on such things as inflation and fractional reserve. In addition to the printed cash, there is also credit and debt, things that fluctuate the economy are supply, demand, credit, and debt, and all of those things feed into the other to create lots of fluctuation within any given country, and this fluctuates the overall value of the world economy, which has a ripple effect of affecting any one given country, because of trade and interdependency, exchangeable value, such as printed money, is always fluctuating. How do you not know this, if money and jobs were finite, we wouldn't have economic collapses, fluctuating employment rates, and fluctuating currencies, if there were a finite amount of jobs when there was a population of 1 billion, does this mean 6 billion people in the world are unemployed, and there is no such thing as a job to population ratio, that too is based on supply and demand, anyhow, neither jobs nor money are finite, the premise for your argument is wrong from the word go. And now that I got your premise out of the way, let me continue boning this. There are so many reasons why you are wrong about this, first, it is an argument of population, much like the notion women buying useless shit is polluting the environment, it is propaganda demonizing a demographic of people, because it applies to all demographics, it is an issue of numbers, not demographics, the more people competing for jobs, lowers the wage, you say, well then, 
we need to cut down on the population because every person born is yet another person filling out a job application for a job you are competing for, if the argument is that two people once had a set amount of material need, and one person was the worker providing for it, the afforded wage compensated this one worker, the father of the house, to afford both the material need of himself, his wife, and children, when the mother began working, the material need did not change, but the amount of people begging for the afforded wage doubled, this is simply neither how it happened, nor is it even accurate in theory, and I confess up until about two years ago, I too thought that's how things worked, mostly because I listened to idiots in the men's movement, first we start with the assumption that the wage afforded to the working father was meant to have him support himself, his wife, and children, this is false, the wage afforded to him was based on economic circumstances having nothing to do with his personal needs, wages being afforded to people, based on their material needs, would be a command economy such as Marxism, the working father was paid what he was paid, and wife and children did in fact work here and there, family to family, to meet the cost of their living, just because we had a golden era where a working father could support the entire family and pay his children's college tuition, doesn't mean because only the father worked that they were so wealthy as to live that lifestyle, in other words, it's like blaming rain on mud puddles, rather than blaming mud puddles on rain, it's like finding a correlation between diabetes and bottles of insulin in the refrigerator and concluding that hoarding insulin bottles causes diabetes, in theory, a working mother and a working father in that same golden era, would just double the family's total income, in fact, this is often why poor families in that golden era had working mothers, fathers, children, because that extra income was needed, in cases of greed, where a family was not trying to make the bare minimum to survive, and just wanted that extra spending money, this just means they ended up buying more stuff, more cars, and so on, and this was good for the economy because with greater spending came a higher demand for jobs to produce those goods and services, the problem became when people bought really nice houses and cars, and expected to make enough money to hold on to those things and keep up with the Joneses, that wage became too high, and so the need for products to meet consumer demand went overseas. The problem is not that men and women are competing for jobs, it's that America is competing with the entire globe for jobs including illegal aliens who can skirt around the minimum wage, if you still believe that more members of the family unit working, lowers the wage of every other person working in the family, then I suggest never telling your children to get a job, because they'll just hurt daddy's wages, no more telling your 22 year old son to get a job, because just like mommy, he's avoiding competing in the workplace with daddy, there's a lot of weird myths in the anti-feminist community like this, for example, I think we've all heard someone quote women joining the workforce didn't double the income, it just got the family unit taxed twice, more basic fallacy here, to make the math simple, let's just say income taxes are 10% and the average person makes $1000 a month, a working father earns $1000 a month, pays $100 into taxes, keeps $900 for the family, Add a working mother and she makes $1,000 a month, pays $100 into taxes, keeps $900 for the family, the difference is a single income family pays $100 in taxes, and keeps $900, a two income family pays $200 in taxes and keeps $1,800, sure, they're paying twice the tax, because they are making twice the amount, the same is true in the case of a wealthier single income family, where the working father makes $2,000 pays 10% tax, $200, and keeps $1,800, so no, you're not getting taxed twice, the family has its income taxed by 10% whether it's one person working, two, three, or four people in that family working, the idea that feminism is some conspiracy by big government to double tax revenue is stupid, because it doesn't work that way, however, due to tax brackets, in some cases, being unmarried and having two separate incomes may save you a small amount because both of you make just under that bracket, albeit this would be a rare circumstance and trivial savings, but the point is, mother and father both working does not get the family taxed twice, if anything, it would allow, in some rare cases, for the family unit to make more money by skirting higher tax brackets, and thus fucking over the tax man, and all of this misses the point, the really sad point that feminists, traditionalists, and MIGTO, need to realize, women didn't start joining the workforce because of feminism's girl power message, it is because the economy itself made it so, and all these dradkin bitches who are beginning to experience just how tough it is to survive, are wanting to climb into the arms of a big strong protector and provider, and are thus championing traditionalism, don't understand that women working, is a thing they have to do because there just aren't enough sugar daddies to pay their bills for them, sure, 
when the cost of living made it painfully difficult for one man to do it, and yet we were just rich enough to have the wife get off her ass, get a real easy job, very conveniently, and make almost as much as her husband, the words of feminists screaming independence, may have started ringing in her ears, but had the man been bringing home twice as much money, and she couldn't make but one fourth to one fifth of that, no, fuck feminism, she would have lived like a traditionalist and supported the traditionalist model to protect and justify that decision, the same is true when the economy gets so rough, that being independent is hard and the responsibility and stress is great, they default to wanting traditionalism because it's the easier choice, that is the basis of what this traditionalism versus feminism in our society is all about, I said it's an argument over what best suits women, and yes, it is. But the deciding factor is the work to reward ratio our current economic circumstances allow. But to reiterate my argument here, 1. Women join the workforce because economic circumstances made it necessary, not because of feminist preaching, 2. Women joining the workforce has not, and would not, split the wage in half, 3. The lowering of our wages is the result of many factors, with outsourcing being one of the biggest factors, 4. Two income families is not the government conspiring to tax us twice or any other such nonsense. 5. Rallying against feminism won't actually set us back to the traditional division of labor, matching America's 1950s, due to economics. Wake up, black women. You are all still slaves and white women are your masters. Strong with the white guilt this one is, and like pretty much every white guiltist out there, concern for the well-being of black people is often more times than not a vicarious attack on an intellectual opposition, liberals claiming conservatives are racist because of blah blah blah, conservatives claiming liberals are actually racist because blah blah blah, I say we push my agenda because it's good for blacks, no no no, I say we push my agenda because it's good for blacks, you're racist if you don't agree with me, no no no, you're racist if you don't agree with me, funny thing is, a shit ton of white people trying to push their own selfish agenda, under the guise that it will be good for some non-white demographic, all the while never really giving a shit, if you could imagine two white people shoving a black guy back and forth at each other hollering you're a racist, no you're the racist, and black people just sitting around wondering does all this fake ass white guilt even benefit us, and the answer to that is, sometimes it does, sometimes, anyhow, Janet's white guilt message here is, as I'm sure you could have guessed, working women are statistically white women, and thus they hire poor people of color to watch their babies, that makes them evil white racists, career women are racist, and they pollute the environment, and cause autism, and it makes baby Jesus cry, you know, same old same old. Want to protect yourself from domestic abuse, be a stay at home wife and mother. Oh for the love of Megatron, I am not even going over this, working women cause pollution, enslave black women, emasculate men, neglect their children, even when they bring their children to work like the CEO of Yahoo, cost their family a fortune, are part of a Marxist conspiracy to weaken the family, have less sexually fulfilling marriages, and now experience more domestic violence, in the words of Charlie Brown, good grief, and there are just so many more posts beating the drums for stay at home mothers. Lean in, says Sheryl Sandberg. That way you won't miss when you chuck your husband and kids under the bus. Yeah, another article about women who work, throw their kids under the bus, is anyone surprised, no really, is anyone surprised at this point, even if we find that these are her old beliefs, haven't we seen enough already to justify people like Diana Davison and Johnny Other, bringing up accusations of traditionalism, and I want you to think about how Paul, Dean, and Janet have responded to this entire thing, claiming Diana is manipulating the poor love struck sap, John, and Diana's motives are based on her being crazy, and jealous of Janet, as in, there's no truth to these rumors, but there is truth to these rumors, look how many times Janet has referred to men staying home as whipped, or kitchen bitches, referred to breadwinner fathers as good and loving, in other words, when a man does his traditional duty, he is good, when he breaks this, he is bad, and women who stay home are loving, caring, and women who work are selfish, and brainwashed, and throwing their family under the bus, in other words, when women break from tradition, they are bad, when they stick to tradition they are good, and how many times now has Janet expressed that the reason the roles can't be reversed is because men are smart and capable workers, but women are stupid and worthless workers who aren't curing cancer, how many times has she indicated this, that I have shown just in the blog articles I have chosen to show, now it could be that because these are admittedly old articles, that she has changed her views, but if that were the case, why not just say so, why not, in her video explaining that she isn't a traditionalist, 
why not just come out and say yeah well, I had a lot of traditionalist views, but my philosophy has evolved since then, and I see things a lot differently now, I am currently living out the traditionalist lifestyle because it's what me and the husband and the kids have been doing for 20 years now, we got a system, it works, it's been working for 20 years, I'm not going to up and change everything to adapt to my more modernized philosophical views, had you just said that Janet, I wouldn't have made the first Bloomfield trial video, no one would give a fuck, no one would be reading over your older blog entries, and had Elam just kept his mouth shut, none of this would be happening, everyone would just shrug it off as John and Diana being a little disgruntled over getting fired from AVFM, the entire thing would have blown over, but here is where you really and truly fucked up Janet, you responded by saying you are not a stay at home mother because you feel entitled, but you are entitled Janet, you've written often about women need to do something useful, of babies, women with babies should stop working, men who stay home are kitchen bitches, you have attacked both men and women when breaking their traditional division of labor. From what we've seen here, you claim that women are just too stupid to have meaningful jobs, and thus shouldn't, they should just stay home and have babies and raise babies, even if somehow you are going to worm your way around calling men who stay home kitchen bitches and claim some more convoluted definition of kitchen bitch, like only when a man is being ordered by his wife to do dishes, I first off don't buy that excuse, which was somewhat the first definition you were trying to pass off on your blog, I don't buy that due to other context in which you've used the term, but even then, even if I did buy it, if a woman is to stop working because women are stupid and don't cure cancer or anything productive with their jobs, and they are to have babies, and they are to stay home raising those babies, if this is true, then who is working and paying for the babies, men, that's who, so here you are pushing for men to be breadwinners, and women to be stay at home mothers, and you even admitted that a traditionalist is someone who pushes this traditional division of labor, and you most certainly have criticized the fuck out of people breaking that traditional division of labor, you have used every excuse in the book including blaming working women for pollution, blaming working women for depreciated wages, female CEOs that build a daycare right in their office are still pieces of child neglecting shit, all of this praising males and giving men a pat on the back, is nothing more than justifying why it is so important for men to work and be breadwinners so you entitled cunts can sit on your spoiled asses and relax at home with your babies that your working husband pays for you've admitted your main gripe against feminism is that they don't support your stay-at-home choice, all of your anti-feminist activism is centered on protecting your stay-at-home entitlement, you claim some men will pay for your beauty, some with 50,000 a month, and others with labor and loyalty, like your husband, well that says you're entitled to his labor, you've also stated that your stay-at-home work and raising children is a thing you deserve to be paid for, Janet, that spells entitled to the money my husband pays, again, you do feel entitled to it, and you have another post, where you claim that your housework is worth 100,000 a year, and I think you were basing that on a Forbes article or something, I can't find that article, I've wasted over 4 hours looking, and I am only one third through looking at your blog, Jesus fucking god your blog is humongous, folks, when I first seen her blog, I thought you just navigated the thing by going to the side, choosing the month and year, and read, so that would have been 2 to 4 posts per month since late 2012, nope, click at the bottom for older posts over and over and over, you find she has about one post every other day since October 2012, it's like seeing a video by Bernard Chapin, and then trying to look through his 3000 plus videos to find it again, good luck, if anyone knows the post I am talking about, could you leave a link and I'll add an annotation right about here linking to it, otherwise I ask the audience to disregard my statement that she claims the work of stay at home mothers is worth 100,000 on the grounds that I can't prove it, my word shouldn't be taken at face value in this type of situation, I may be mistaken to the point, or I may have snapped and imagined the damn article, at any rate, Janet, you have demonstrated a sense of entitlement, well folks, is she a traditionalist, Janet Bloomfield, I find you 100%. Baby should not be separated from mommy overnight during the first year of life? How about they should not be separated from their primary caregiver, and sometimes, that means daddy. Oh god damn it, after I had such a great case against you, you have to go and have an article like that, defending fatherhood, and reminding us that men can be primary caregivers, and reciting the story of your neighbor or friend or whoever, that would tuck the bottle under his arm and feed his baby and how wonderful it was, and this post is made at about the same time you're making these other posts about your stay at home entitlement, however the article is laced with the damaging pseudoscience of mother's breast milk does magic shit to make children healthy and not autistic or whatever. However you seem to think it's also right that if necessary a mother be ordered by court to provide breast milk for the father to bottle, 
or at least made some reference to something like that. Either rate, this is very good pro-father material that would seem to stand in opposition to women are entitled to stay at home, but one inconsistency does not undo a strong pattern, and so I still find you. Legal parental surrender is not morally equivalent to an abortion and no amount of bitchy sarcasm will make it so. Yeah, Amanda Marcotte, I'm talking to you. So you are in favor of legal paternal surrender, well, that's good, certainly MIGTO approved and all that. But Janet, doesn't this stand in opposition to your fierce dedication that women stay home with children, if a man says oh you're pregnant, well fuck, I am out of here. Now what, the woman, if she chooses to go through with the pregnancy, is going to have to work, that would go against your utmost fundamental principle here, and maybe you could say that the man should be able to walk away, and the woman should have an abortion, okay, but you didn't specify specifics or a time limit, so according to your article I could assume you mean a father can walk away at any time from his parental obligation to pay child support, which would then force a woman to commit the greatest sin on earth, work while having a baby, so even though this statement from you is good, very pro micto and all, it suffers from being inconsistent with the other message you have been preaching. God damn it Janet, I just ask for a little consistency here, it is really difficult to make a ruling when you're this inconsistent, you also, from various blog posts, say things like, being raised without a loving father is a crime against humanity, in my opinion, and, know how to grant single mothers genuine independence, let them pay for themselves, let them lie in the beds they have made, you want to have a child without a man's support, then accept that you will not have a man's support, and, yes, you read that correctly, child support should be 100% voluntary, and then we have absolutely no shortage of shit like, so what is a young lady to do when she's ready for college but has no real idea of what she wants to do or be or how to support herself once she's done, easy, don't go, find a husband, have some children, stay home and raise them yourself and give yourself time to turn into a mature and responsible woman, raising your own children and taking care of your own home will help that process, and believe me, after a decade of folding underpants and doing dishes, you won't be talked into chucking 50 grand of your family's money into fine arts or children's literature or any other of the useless liberal arts majors you can declare, translation, women, stop working, stop going to college, stop being self-sufficient, just fucking pop out babies and have a man support you, if I didn't know better, I'd swear your blog was run by different people, considering all these differing statements are all clustered around the same time period, I'd say that, but I do know better, because I have watched you in your own videos, contradict yourself and leave me scratching my head wondering if you suffer from some sort of multiple personality disorder, if only I had some way, some decisive thing to help me lay down a once and for all judgment, oh look, a new video with you and Paul Elam. Exactly, and it's, it's absolutely ridiculous, it's, it's, oh, and you know this is where I would love to, once we figure out how this whole thing's gonna work, I would love to throw it open, anyone get in here and ask me questions, ask me to clarify things, question what I'm saying, ask me or, or you know be critical you're welcome to do it and I think that this show is going to evolve into a real um, conversation about these issues not just me talking you know when I talk on my blog I get certain comments so it's very one-sided and I think we're at a point in the culture now where we can have these conversations we can have these conversations openly there's enough people who who know enough about the issues to really get something fantastic started. So I hope this show is the beginning of that. Um, we're starting to get splintering inside the men's human rights movement as, as people factionalize. And I actually think as, as difficult as that is and as painful as it can be, it's also good. It means that we're getting big enough that different areas can emerge. I agree with this. I believe the infighting we are experiencing is long overdue and necessary, one of the greatest problems the men's movement has always faced is lack of any cohesive ideology, just different people having different reasons to gripe about feminism, tell women to get back in the kitchen, and tell men to man up, I could go on for an hour on what a train wreck the old community was, point is, it is time that people hammer out an actual ideology, an actual purpose that goes beyond telling feminists to knock it off and get back in the kitchen we must evolve, and sometimes that means different factions parting ways, so I agree with your statement, this is also one of those rare moments you've said something intelligent, I feel like I am supposed to give you something now. And some of those, some of those factions are going to fight each other, um, but I don't think that, let's take that Midtown community that likes to get very critical of me for being a traditionalist, um, 
come, come and join the show. Come and talk to me. Ask me your questions. I'll be happy to answer them. I mean, I'm not going to lurk on anyone's YouTube channel and watch their videos. Well, I'm not going to tune into a video broadcast I am only aware of two weeks after it airs. So if bringing up a case, in a video, showing your apparent contradictions that require addressing, isn't good enough for you to watch and respond to, fuck you. But face to face, one on one, you and me right here and now, get in here on this hangout and ask me the questions that you have. Why, you know the allegations brought forth against you by John, Diana, and to some degree, myself. You've seen the videos. Go right ahead honey and respond to them. Oh wait, you're only going to respond to something on your watch. When tuning in is a must in order to have the privilege of talking to you. You can get off your high horse now. I mean, there's one, I have over a million, I don't know how many words you have on your blog, but just like the bash of violent bitch. I have over a million words on my blog. Over a million. There's more than 500 posts. Lots of them are way bigger than 2,000 words. There's well over a million. And some, uh, a different, uh, one little subsect inside the MGTOW community got one paragraph, maybe 30 words, 30 words out of millions. Well, not millions, but over one million. <laughs> we don't need to get, get too, uh, too much into hyperbole here, but they find this one paragraph. And I thought the accus accusation was so absurd, I basically just ignored it. Like, oh, whatever, this is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Anyone who thinks that I advocate for men to be women's slaves hasn't read fuck all of my work and doesn't know anything that I'm doing. So I just ignored it. But just a few days ago, I went back and I actually looked at the article that I wrote. It was about the, the bride who shoved her husband off a cliff and then left him there to die. And she was up on first degree, no, she was up on second degree murder charges where my post was really about why the hell isn't she up on first? I mean, this was premeditated. Hey, honey, look at this view. Isn't this sweet? Poof, off he goes. She planned it. She picked a spot. I mean, how could they not make this fucking charge stick? That's what the story was about. And then I started talking about patriarchy. Formal power versus informal power. The idea that patriarchy harms and enslaves women is completely fucking trash because women have informal power. What the patriarchy allows is for women to shove men off of cliffs and face no consequences. It doesn't harm women, it protects them from the consequences of their actions up to and including killing men. They get protected from the consequences of those actions by the so-called patriarchy. At no point anywhere in this post do I say, oh yeah, that's fantastic, I love it, let's have a, yeah, I want to be able to kill any man I want and not face consequences. Let's bring back traditional power. It, it, it was an absurd. And the, the most ridiculous irony is that they're doing, this little community is doing the exact same fucking thing all the little social justice warrior critic assholes do. They take one, one very tiny, small snippet of writing. They pull it out of its context. They do not refer to the context that it was in. Then they twist it, deliberately obscure the meaning to promote their own ideology. There's no interest in truth. There's no interest in what what the point of this was. Okay Janet, this is bullshit. I am aware of the quote you are referring to. I was first made aware of it from Diana Davison's video. I am aware of the quote, and I even took your side, stating, in my first Bloomfield on trial video, that I believed Diana misunderstood your statement. I said I didn't think it meant what Diana thought it meant, and I don't believe Diana was taking you out of context either. That quote Diana read to us, was baffling. It was just phrased weird, and even in the context of the entire blog post, it was difficult to tell what you meant. Like, you know what, let me just grab the quote. Of course, there is a price to pay for surrendering formal power in favor of informal power. It means that our sons, our brothers, our fathers, our nephews, our cousins, our friends, can be shoved off a cliff and the murderess will face little to no consequence for that. In return for that sacrifice, we get the protection of men. The discrepancy was that it sounded like you were saying that women should sacrifice formal power, that feminism seeks, for informal power, that women traditionally have, because the informal power gives women the power to do outrageous things like killing men, like you were saying traditionalism gives us enormous power, 
quit rocking the boat you feminists, and as I said, I disagreed with that interpretation, as did many others. But to be fair, it was an ambiguous statement, you have a habit of making ambiguous statements, like this for example. From the blog entry 2014, January 22nd, entitled, 5 Rights Feminism Delivered for Women, but doesn't want to share with anyone else. 4. The right to not be assumed natural caregivers, feminists have long railed against the stereotype that women are naturally more loving than men, and therefore better suited to be caregivers for small children. Of course, these very same women hire other women to care for their children when they are occupied with something more important, and are reluctant to even contemplate hiring an occasional babysitter who is male, but we'll ignore the inconsistency for the moment. If women have no innate advantage over men when it comes to caring for small children, why then are feminist organizations so opposed to shared parenting and automatic joint custody when parental relationships fail? What's up with that? Are men and women equally suited to be providers of care, or are they not? Well which one is it? Are you saying that feminists claim women are not naturally better caregivers, but secretly know they are, which means you yourself believe women to be naturally better caregivers? Or are you saying that you agree with feminists that women are not naturally better caregivers, because it's not like you to agree with a feminist, so Janet, anyone could easily mistake this for you believing women are naturally better caregivers, and who knows, maybe that is what you meant, I am honestly confused, the point is, you do this a lot actually, you make statements where people aren't clear about which side of an argument you are taking, and again, I want to point out I, who is a pretty popular and rather respected MIGTO, actually took your side on this and so did many other MIGTO, so for you to act like there is this small faction of MIGTO, by the way we're the majority and I'll get into that in a bit, who are just like the social justice warriors because they quote mind you, is complete bullshit, one individual misunderstood you, many others weren't sure, but the general consensus was, one odd statement does not a guilty person make, so Diana made another video with more quotes and provided links to where she got them, and then the whole argument in the community over you being a traditionalist, and what direction was AVFM going in, was John and Diana crazy and or disgruntled, or were they truth telling whistleblowers, I decided I would put you on trial and go over your work with a fine tooth comb to come to a conclusion, which would be more beneficial than having John and Diana versus Paul Elam yelling he said she said to one another, and not that I am defending these cultural Marxist social justice ass wipes, but the phenomenon you are ascribing to them, and accusing MIGTO of, is not a primary characteristic of social justice warriors. Quote mining is a tactic used by many dishonest people in practically every demographic, and is more times than not, snagged out of context because the person didn't get the context to realize they were removing the quote from it, and again, not to defend social justice warriors, but this phenomenon exists everywhere, and comparing MIGTO to social justice warriors is just stupid, you have better luck comparing us to the feminists, like everyone else does, because there are some actual parallels, as I said, two different biological demographics perceiving themselves as victims of the other, and retaliating against that group to alleviate the victimization, are bound to have a lot of parallels, so there is at least a grain of truth to the knee-jerk squealing of just as bad as the feminists, but just as bad as the social justice warriors, is baseless and you make yourself look retarded and lose credibility. Let's take a look at some numbers, the amount of views my channel has received in the past 28 days, and keep in mind, at February 14th, I haven't even made a video over the past month, but the views for my channel is 72,791, the views for MIGTO sub forum of AVFM's forum, for 28 days is 8,365, now admittedly that's me counting the views of all posts between January 16th and February 14th, other older posts on that forum may be getting views per day, and I honestly don't know what the total view count is, but I can't imagine that number even being double, so my channel which hasn't had a video uploaded in a month, has more views than the MIGTO section on AVFM, now, let's look at the comments slash posts, on my channel, it's 27,654, over the channel's lifetime, on AVFM's MIGTO sub forum it's 3,860, over the forum's lifetime, and AVFM's MIGTO sub forum is older than my channel, I'm sorry to say, my channel alone is bigger than AVFM's MIGTO base, however, the AVFM forum in total is much bigger than my channel, containing almost twice the amount of subscribers, and easily more total views, but keep in mind it is older, and most of the people on that forum aren't self-identified MIGTO, and this is just pitting numbers against my channel alone, I'm sure John the others numbers are even higher, AVFM's total forum members, 12,313, 
doubt even half call themselves MIGTO, Barbarossa, perhaps the most respected MIGTO, subscribers, 19,009, ask Louis Marcos subscribers, 25,647, Sandman's subscribers, 22,725, and many many others, who are all in agreement, MIGTO is not pro-marriage, it stands in opposition to both marriage and traditionalism, and if you're married, we're just not going to call you MIGTO, looking at AVFM's traffic, to which I will admit their unique visitors have gone up a lot over the past year, but looking at their traffic, according to multiple web traffic analysis Sandman alone is probably getting just under the daily visits AVFM gets, that would be the entire site, being visited by every kind of traffic including web crawler bots, for you to try to say that we are some teeny tiny little minority of MIGTO, is fucking laughable, either you think lying over and over will somehow make it true, or you're just so oblivious to the fact that Paul Elam's marriage friendly style MIGTO, is a very small minority of MIGTO. Here are some pictures of the numbers I was talking about. why this was written. All they want to do is they've decided, and in my particular case, I think I've got some fucking jealous mean girl shit going on, and it was just an attempt to paint me in the worst possible light so that people would think I wasn't a supporter of men's rights, that here I am trying to, I'm trying to enslave men so that I'm allowed to push them <laughs> off cliffs and face the consequences. <laughs> now there are a few men I would love to push off a cliff. This is true. This is true. <laughs> oh, hey, club miners heaven there. Let the yeah. US community come after that one. They'll slice that two seconds out and make a, yeah. a whole video off of it. Really nice a really nice quote, the patriarchy allows women to push men off a cliff with no consequence. Okay, you can cut that one and, and use that to show how I support that. How I'm like, I totally think that's fantastic. That's the best thing I've ever heard. It's such fucking garbage. It's such garbage. The whole traditionalism MGTOW thing is, it's as illogical as feminism. Feminism is about giving women choices. Unless you want to be a stay-at-home mother. Or a, or a hooker, or get married when you're young, then that's the wrong choice, and you can't make that choice. I mean, that's or right a female MRA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't be a female MRA. You are not a feminist. That's not one of the choices you're allowed. And here's MGTOW, men going their own way. So if you as a man sit down and decide the best thing for you in your life and the way you want to go is to get married, you're not allowed to do that because you have to go the way we say you have to go. You can't let me just explain something here, and let me do that by first saying I agree with the feminists too, I agree that you cannot call yourself a feminist, while being a member of the men's rights movement, you cannot be a feminist and before a rule by fathers, you cannot be a feminist and be against a woman's right to vote and own property, it is true that by being a feminist, there are certain paths you can no longer take, if you are an MRA you cannot be a feminist, because by being an MRA, you are taking a path that is not in line with feminism and vice versa, and if you are MIGTO, you cannot subscribe to a traditionalist gynocentric way of life, MIGTO is an opposition to that path. The path of normal, common, status quo, the direction most men are going in and have been going in, the traditional path for men, is the path in which a MIGTO veers off of in order to be a MIGTO, MIGTO is veering off the traditional gynocentric path, let me see if I can get this through your remarkably stupid heads, you cannot be a feminist and an anti-feminist, you cannot be an anti-feminist and a feminist, these two things indicate you are not the other, here you are mocking feminism because to be a feminist means you reject certain paths that are antithetical to feminism, this is not an appropriate criticism of feminism, anti-feminism, or MGTO, you cannot be a square and a rectangle, you cannot eat steak and call yourself a vegetarian, you cannot be a carnivore and eat vegetables or a herbivore and eat meat, some things are what they are by virtue of what they are not, you cannot make an argument that a thing is bad for being a thing in which another thing is not, it's a nonsensical argument, furthermore, MGTO is not a declaration that men should have choices, men already have choices, the problem is they continue by far and large to make the wrong choices, most men choose to be white knights, and MGTO is not cool with that choice, most men drop to their knee, humble themselves before a woman, and beg for her hand in marriage, and become a cog in the matriarchal wheel, MGTO is not cool with this, this whole argument of these crazy MGTO are trying to tell men what they are not allowed to do, is a piss poor argument because non MGTO MRAs do the same fucking thing, you people are constantly criticizing male feminists, 
Oh how dare you, how dare you not support men who wear he for she t-shirts, and how dare you mock men for marching in slut walk and holding signs telling their brothers to stop raping, why oh why doesn't AVFM stand up for these men's rights to hold those male bashing signs, when's the last time you guys stood up for David Futrell? Look at the way Paul and AVFM are dissing David Futrell, David is a man, I thought AVFM was a voice for men, well apparently they're only a voice for men who agree with them, you see that, that's the asinine shit you two are doing right now. And be a female MRA, you are not a feminist, that's not one of the choices you're allowed. And here's MGTOW, men going their own way. So if you as a man sit down and decide the best thing for you in your life and the way you want to go is to get married, you're not allowed to do that. because. You have to go the way we say you have to go. You can't just go your own way. The whole philosophy of men going your own way is you have to go the way I tell you to go. What the fuck? What, I think how it's fair to make a, 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 a clarification there that, uh, that these guys, I mean, they call themselves MGTOW, and I can't argue with their right to do that. If they say they're MGTOW, they are, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but this particular band of idiots uh, out there don't strike me as representative at all of MGTOW philosophy, not the MGTOW philosophy uh, that I've read. It's uh, stuff that these guys have begun writing in YouTube comments as they go along, uh, as they react to each thing that offends them deeply. Uh, but this isn't about MGTOW to me. MGTOW to me is still a very important part of our cultural shift. I think it'll eventually have a positive impact in terms of restoring some balance between the sexes. But this particular band of ideologues, they basically just called themselves MGTOW. What they are is social justice warriors, just like you said. They're feminists uh, in, in terms of their behavior and actions. And uh, they have just enough spine to attack the pe people who are not their real enemies. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say on that for today. Yeah. It's such a shame because I have a lot of um, MGTOW commenters on my blog and I don't see this kind of craziness at all. What I see is that the entire philosophy, right at the heart of the philosophy, is that it is a man's choice what he wants to do. Whether or not you choose to get married is part of your way and you define that way. This is about removing the social expectation that men must get married, that men have to support families. No, if you choose to, if that is your way, your choice, the way you want to live your life, you are free to do that. You are also free to make any other goddamn choice you want. But then that just means do whatever you feel like doing. But guess what? Everyone is and has been doing whatever they want. Feminists, male and female, are doing what they want. Men who reject marriage are doing what they want, men who are getting married are doing whatever they want, child molesters and rapists are doing what they want, slut walkers and people who flag MGTO YouTube channels are doing what they want, so everybody is MGTO according to your definition. This goes beyond a bunch of bachelors merely trying to remove some stigma of being single or the social pressure to marry, this is a phenomenon with an ideology to explain, justify, and encourage the phenomenon. MGTO is an awakening to the sexual dynamics of our culture, it is a rejection of the gynocentric aspects of those dynamics, you cannot reject these dynamics while proudly partaking in them, furthermore, removing the stigma on being a bachelor is begging for social approval, MGTO don't beg for approval, we'll be bachelors with or without society's blessing. This craziness about, you know, if you live with a woman or if you're married to a woman, you be having to pass some sort of ideological purity test. It, it immediately shows you that they've, they've gone off the same deep end that social justice warriors and feminists have gone off. Tone policing, deciding what specific word you're allowed to use. I mean, how hilarious is that? Come and join a movement called Men Going Their Own Way and we will tell you down to the last syllable what you're allowed to say. I mean, they're not going to win. They're not going to destroy this MGTOW movement because it's an essential part of freeing men from gender ex. The, the expectation of gender roles. There is nothing wrong with gender roles. There is a lot wrong with the expectation that men have to embrace them the way that anyone decides. No one gets or, to decide. Or that women have to. Uh, uh, it is, uh, I agree, I, all I can say is I agree and I find it particularly ironic that some of the, uh, the most vociferous uh, dogma 
about this stuff is emanating from the mouth of someone <laughs> who's living with a woman who has basically got him on a leash and instructing him what to say. But I don't want to get too far into that. I just I laugh about that whenever I think about it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's uh, I was your show, but I guess that's enough time to give to these guys. Um, uh, not yeah, worth it. It's not worth it. Not worth the time. I don't watch any of those silly videos and stuff. I I just wanted to address the fact that you know it. If there are questions from Men Going Wrong Way, if you would like clarifications, if you want to talk to me about what I think, I'm more than willing to do that. And this is the forum that I hope is really going to take off. Now, I am going to need to... Uh, you, know you don't watch our silly little videos? Well, maybe that is why you are completely ignorant. Did either of you two jackasses ever stop to think that there is a movement outside of the voiceforman.com internet domain? Believe it or not, that domain name, and all the conversation that takes place within that domain, is only a small portion of the world. Open a window and look, there's a whole world going on outside of your little circle, jerk. If you want to address us, then address us. The idea that all of us are to drop our busy lives and tune into your Google Hangout to have a conversation with you, get over yourself. Neither you nor Paul are anywhere near as big or as important as your inflated egos would have you believe. This craziness about, you know, if you live with a woman or if you're married to a woman, you be having to pass some sort of ideological purity test. No one said that you can't live with a woman. You're making shit up, you stupid cunt. Ideological purity test. Yeah, don't get married. One rule, deal with it. Christ Almighty, Migto come up with one rule, and it's one too many. My God, vegetarians saying you can't eat meat and call yourself a vegetarian. Oh, the rules, the rules. The purity tests, will they ever end? It, it immediately shows you that they've, they've gone off the same deep end that social justice warriors and feminists have gone up. Tone policing, deciding what specific word you're allowed to use. What the fuck are you talking about? Who's tone policing? What the fuck are you talking about? You know what I am hearing. What I am hearing is, if MGTOW have as much as one belief, it's one belief too many. If there is just one rule, it's one too many. Shut your mouth and go your own way. That's what it feels like you're trying to get across. If a MGTOW has just one belief, it's one too many, because we all know MGTOW is a snazzy cool alternative label for MRA, any effort to differentiate itself from MRA is being just like a social justice warrior, this is what I am hearing, outrageous mockery because MGTOW reject marriage. I mean how hilarious is that? Come and join a movement called Men Going Their Own Way and we will tell you down to the last syllable what you're allowed to say. What the fuck are you talking about you stupid whore? What MGTOW is saying this shit? One rule, you can't call yourself MGTO and be married, and this is how you interpret us? Now who the fuck has gone off the deep end? I mean, they're not going to win. They're not going to destroy this MGTO movement, because... What MGTO movement? According to you too, a MGTO is doing whatever you fucking feel like. Well guess what? That's not a movement. This whole going your own way means choosing your own path. Well everyone has been choosing their own path. I hardly call people doing what they've already been doing. A movement, at best, you people are trying to define MGTO as an MRA, to for God only knows what reason, likes to use the hip new snazzy term MGTO to be all edgy. As for tone policing, if you are taking liberties with that word, and meaning saying a thing is right or wrong, good or bad, allowed or disallowed, the new assholes are trying to tone police us. The topic of can married men call themselves MGTO occurred, and we had a discussion about it, and the great bulk of us decided that no, MGTO could not be a marriage friendly movement. And while we do not wish ill on married men, and will work alongside of them for the greater good of the male sex, we will not consider married men to be MGTO, and ask that those married men who want to be a part of this, just continue preaching what is in your heart, preach what you need to. But just don't call yourself MGTO while doing it, we came up with one rule, and look how you AVFM fuckers with your MHRA brand treat us, you fucking go off the deep end, saying we're just like the social justice warriors, boy oh boy. Us MGTO have consensus on just one thing outside of the MRM, and you fuckers go on the attack. How's that for tone policing? Again, I need to point out the underlying theme of this little conversation. You two are griping that the moment MGTO come up with as much as one thing, just one tiny little principle that would in any way differentiate themselves from an MRA, it's one principle too many, which translates to MGTO may not exist, use the term MGTO if you like. But philosophically you must be a Navy FM approved MRA, in most cases, 
most MIGTO are indistinguishable from most MRAs, we can add up a lot of common differences for sure. But there are no concrete differences, these are all kinda sorta maybe sometimes differences, but is there even one concrete difference? Yeah, don't get married, one concrete difference, just one, and this is the sort of slanderous hysterics you are souls pull. Some feminists have gone up tone policing, deciding what specific word you're allowed to use. I mean, how hilarious is that? Come and join a movement called Men Going Their Own Way and we will tell you down to the last syllable what you're allowed to say. I mean, they're not going to win. They're not going to destroy this MGTOW movement. Fuck you idiots. Fuck your lies. Fuck your hysterical hyperbole. And fuck your efforts to rebrand MGTOW as a marriage friendly movement that does not differ from any other faction of the MRM slash anti-feminist crowd. I have already stated, you are not a traditionalist in the tradcon sense, you are atheist, pro-abortion, pro-legal paternal surrender, pro-gay marriage, pro-gay adoption, and I guess pro-swinger, that last one I am not sure about, but you do not display any of this Christian conservative family values shit, so the con part is not there, are you a traditionalist in the sense that you support and encourage the traditional gender division of labor, yes, about 80% to 90% of the time, even if you do here and there randomly stray from that. You have spoken no shortage of it, and downright viciously ridicule people who break from that traditional division of labor, and have ridiculed them under any and every pretense imaginable. You even said in your video that you understand that traditionalism means, traditional division of labor, and insisting it's the way it is supposed to be. You then have no shortage of shaming women out of their jobs and into stay-at-home motherhood. You even do this in cases where the fictitious woman does not have a kid, but according to you, need to go have a kid, then proceed to stay at home and live off of their man's labor. Oh, and you ridicule MGTO for being anti-marriage instead of pro-marriage choice or whatever, and you ridicule feminism for not supporting women's choices to be stay-at-home mothers and prostitutes, yet here you are shaming women who choose not to stay at home and be mothers, fuck off, you hypocritical crusty cunt, you beat the war drums and fight a battle to keep women barefoot, pregnant, and in the kitchen, and claim you're not a traditionalist because while beating those drums, you skip a beat here and there to support stay-at-home fathers or legal paternal surrender, or something else, but that's all it is, the occasional missed beat on those war drums, I looked over all of your work, looked at it from every angle I could think of, I have been as fair as anyone could be, I wanted to pull some last moment twist and actually take your side or at least find some excuse to say you weren't guilty, chalk it up to misunderstanding or whatever, it would have made for some awesome entertainment, but at the end of the day, no, I just can't. Janet Bloomfield, I find you guilty of being a traditionalist, and all around antithetical to the MGTOW movement, whether you are guilty of this due to malice, or due to ignorance, I cannot say, but I find you guilty. And for Paul Elam and Dean Ismay, for supporting this woman, I find you guilty of being an accomplice, let me put it to you like this, I am willing to admit that depending on which blog entries you read, and in what order you read them, it is not impossible to come away thinking she is not a traditionalist, I get that. I really do, but for you two to act like John and Diana are making up the most baseless and laughable bullshit, that's deception on your part, even if, for whatever reason, you conclude that when all is said and done, she is not a traditionalist, no intelligent and honest person can read over her blog and deny that there is at least good evidence for some people to come away with that impression, the way you people have laughed, rolled your eyes, dismissively waved your hand, and acted like accusations of traditionalism were completely unfounded and the whole thing is an evil crazy jealous plot by John and Diana. This goes beyond ignorance or disagreement, this is downright dishonest on your part, and even if John and Diana are crazy whack jobs, and you don't believe she is a traditionalist, considering the evidence I have presented, the evidence that is on her blog, you have no right to pretend that these claims never had any merit to them, to do that, would be downright dishonest, the way Paul, Janet, and Dean, have handled this entire thing, is dishonest, egotistical, and childish, in spite of the fact Dean Ismay was once a man I considered a friend and ally, and a man who has rallied against traditionalism often, Paul Elam, Dean Ismay, Janet Bloomfield, I find all three of you guilty of being antithetical to MGTOW.